five sad realities of dating apps number one paradox of choice while we might believe that being presented with multiple options makes it easier to choose one of those options it actually makes it harder to make a single decision and move in one direction give you an example let's say it was 12 p.m at night and i said yo i'm hungry and you're like yo i'm hungry too i was like where do you want to go to eat there's only wendy's and mcdonald's open well then your options become very easy you either choose wendy's or mcdonald's you don't think about trader joe's you don't think is trader joe's even a restaurant that's a grocery store you don't think about applebee's a burger king you don't think about nothing else except mcdonald's or wendy's now if i told you it's 6 p.m in the afternoon let's go get something to eat what do you want to eat your choices are wendy's burger king mcdonald's you got applebee's we can go to shake shack in and out kfc we can go to home depot they got some good food in home depot i give you some that are fast food i give you some that are restaurants i give you some that are dining i give you some that are local i give you some that are franchises i give you so many different options and you spend more time sitting and thinking and sifting through those options than you do actually making a decision because the plethora of decisions while they give you more options and you think that oh i can make a better decision because i have so much more options truthfully and honestly it makes it so much harder to make a good decision because you end up getting frustrated with the fact that you don't know how to narrow your decisions down and so what might you do in that scenario you might figure out a way to narrow your decisions because if i gave you 10 restaurants to go to okay maybe some of them are further than others so let's only choose the ones that are closest to us maybe some of them are fast food and we don't want fast food we're trying to stay healthy on our diet so we're going to exclude the fast food spots once you're met with the plethora of options it becomes a more painful process because now you have to take the extra steps of narrowing things down in some sort of system and so the reason i give you guys that example is because it's the same thing with the dating apps from the men's perspective we have a plethora of options and so we must come up with systems to narrow those options. So then you're naturally gonna ask, what are the systems to narrow those options? Because of the plethora of options to choose from, when it comes to women, we need different criteria to narrow down those options, like I gave in the example with the McDonald's and the, and the Wendy's, which makes majority of men cast the widest net possible with all of their different tactics and using rejections just though some of the women saying no as a way to help them choose which woman they're going to go on a date with or which woman they're going to start talking to. Now, you might think to yourself, oh, well, that's not that bad. They're just trying to weigh all their options and see as many girls as they possibly can. That's not inherently bad because if he wants me, then he wants me. Well, no, this is how it works against you because the woman, you, you, <laughs> you're a woman, end up matching with men who weren't necessarily specifically interested in them remember they're just casting the widest net they possibly can so what ends up happening is you become just average enough to fit in the wide fishnet that these men cast out into the ocean then you begin a relationship with someone on a misunderstanding of his interest level in you naturally if you were to meet someone, let's just say out at a grocery store or whatever, and you talk to them, you strike a conversation, you're able to build some chemistry, some connection, and you're able to get a gauge on how interested he is in you, especially if after the conversation, he asks you out on a coffee date or a dinner date or whatever. And so you're properly able to gauge, okay, he's pretty interested in me. He's trying to pursue me. He really wants to get to know me more. He definitely likes some character traits about me, whether it's my smile, the way I laugh, the way we have good conversation. There's things that he likes about me specifically. In the process of them casting the widest net, they're not really interested in any one individual woman because they can't sit down and date or think about, oh, do I? what do I like about this girl? Do I really think she's cute enough? Do I really like her person? No, they're just trying to gather as many women as possible and use some of the women rejecting them as a way to narrow it down. So by the time he does match with you on one of these dating apps, and you guys do start talking, he wasn't really interested in you. You just fit the average criteria of the average woman that he cast this wide net on. And because you didn't reject him and you accepted him, you've now 
fit into his net of other fish. The problem is he's not really that interested in you as a single human being. Now you're growing a relationship with someone under the impression that they're really interested in you, the person, and trying to get to know you, not realizing that they're not that interested in you in general. And that already gets things started off on the bad foot, which is why that is number one. Number two, we have deception. Men realize that majority of women are on the app to look for a relationship. So they take that opportunity to sell those women a dream that they already know those women will want to believe in. I'll give you guys an example. If I met an average girl on a dating app and I really want to get inside her squirtle because I haven't gotten anything in a while, okay? Let's just say it's been a real dry season for me, but I have no intention of committing to her. I'm going to pretend as if I'm here for the same reason as her and I really want to date her specifically, even though my real interest is in having pineapples with her and not being with her. And I'm not saying all this stuff to make men sound like the worst, but you know, like the dating apps is mostly the men pursuing the women. So there obviously has to be some strategy involved. Unbeknownst to you, these men are coming up with these strategies to deceive you knowing that the only way you'd be on this dating app is if you wanted to extract a long-term serious relationship from you. So what do they do? They do their best to present to you as if they want a long-term serious relationship with you. You don't know this, but this will be news to you. You can actually go on YouTube and watch videos of men instruct other men how to create the most attractive dating profile that they possibly can. I kid you not. And I'm not just talking about, you know, just a little bit like this and you know, this will be uh, more interesting and stuff like that. I'm talking like down to the T. I'm talking like down to what pictures you put first, what picture you put second, what picture you put third, how to take it, what to put in it, where to, whether to put your dogs in it, whether to put your cat in it, what you guys should be doing in it. I, like I'm talking about everything, the prompts you should use. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. If you guys are heavy on hinge, I don't know if you've ever experienced guys having very similar prompts to each other, right? Or very similar bios to each other. Let's say they make a joke or say something weird or interesting or funny in their, in their bio on the dating app. And you realize you're like, that's very similar to something I've seen before, but you think it's just a coincidence because maybe they just have the same interest. Maybe they just think the same. It's not. It's because they've both watched a video on YouTube or TikTok, wherever they got their information. They realize that they can attract the most amount of women if they use this particular dating app template. I'll tell you right now, one off literally the very top of my head. They always tell guys when you're creating your profile, it would be smartest for you if you have a dog to put a picture of you and your dog as the first picture in your profile because it makes you see more personable, open, friendly, everyone loves dogs, makes you seem more harmless. And so you're more likely to get girls to swipe right on you if the first picture they see of you is you with your dog. They also advise you to post, put pictures on there of you going on adventures, doing specific things, make your life look interesting as possible. That will get you the most swipes. So what if I'm a guy and I don't have a dog? Well, then they tell you, go find a dog, put a dog in there. Just put any dog in there. You can even put the dog in there. And then when they ask about it, you can say it's not your dog because you already got them to swipe right. So what does it matter? Go find a dog, your friend's dog, take a picture with it, Put that as the top of your profile pic picture, attract as many women as you can and go about your day. Even if those uh, pictures or videos are very misleading as to what your personality or character is, doesn't matter. You're not trying to give an accurate depiction of your personality or character. You're trying to cast the widest net and attract the most women. Number three, modern day bar. This is where we're going to get super deep with stuff. And this is where, you know, it's going to feel brutal. Like it's going to be tough rather than being forced to go to the local bar and have game in order to sleep with women like they would have in the past six or seven years ago before we had dating apps. Now men can access all of you even easier by using the dating app. So let me pause there. 
Do you see how you put yourself at a disadvantage by being available on the dating app? Do you see how when you make yourself accessible on the dating app and then he gets to sift through you along with thousands of other women? Do you see how like that can be slightly humiliating? The fact that your face and body pops up in four or five pictures and in 10 to 15 seconds, he literally makes a decision based on a couple of pictures that could be good or bad angles of you or good or bad lighting of you to decide whether or not he wants to spend the rest of his life with you or whether or not you're worthy of being someone he would even be interested in getting to know. Because I know a lot of you guys are confused. Why can't I get the men to chase me? Why can't I get the men to see how valuable I am? Why can't I get the men to treat me like they treat the IG model? Why can't I get the men to treat me like they treat, you know, they talk about their favorite celebrity or chase after their favorite you know supermodel but you're putting yourself in a position where you make yourself look so average so mundane so just like all the other thousands of women that he's sifting through and then you wonder why by the time he gets to you he doesn't see the value in you before he had to get to you he had to swipe through 500 other women and after he meets you he'll still have 500 more to swipe through. This is why I say this is not all about blaming men, but I just want you to put the, when we lay down the psychology behind what's happening, it shouldn't be a surprise to you why these men find it difficult to be motivated to chase after you or to try to do things for you. Because you're putting yourself in a position where the way he's meeting you or coming across you is in a place where the only thing for him to think about you is that you're just like or very similar to the thousands of other women that I see on this app. That's why I talked about the paradox of choice at the beginning, because in a sea of thousands of women, it's actually even harder to identify the differential qualities in all of the different women. If I put three guys in front of you and I told you, pick out the most attractive one. It probably wouldn't take you very long to pick out the most attractive person because you only have three people to look at and there's only so much you can compare and contrast. Whereas if I put a hundred men in front of you and told you to pick out the most attractive one, it would probably take you quite some time to pick out the most attractive men in a group of a hundred. Because by the time you have all of these different options to sift through, it becomes hard to even be able to judge which is better than the other, which is less than the other. Everyone just kind of combines into this mush of average and mundane where everyone kind of just looks and feels the same. And it's the same thing in your dating apps. When you combine yourself with all of these hundreds and thousands of other women, it makes for a scenario in which he can't even tell if you're the highest quality or the lowest quality. You just kind of seem average. And so what happens? He treats you as if you are just average. For example, let's say I know that I'm really aged. Let's call it aged. Do you know what I mean when I say aged? Okay. I'm really aged. Um, and I want pineapples. I want sex. But I also know that I don't have the motivation to leave my house and talk to people where I might get rejected because that's too nerve wracking. Okay. So rather than risking rejection and putting myself out there, I get on a dating app as an easy way to not face rejection head on. Because when the women on the dating app reject me, I don't actually have to see them or experience them rejecting me. So easy win for me. Even though I'm just looking for quick thrills, I can use the dating app the same way I would use a bar to meet new women. Because why would I go to the bar if I already can access all the women and even more women than I would have been able to access at the bar right from my dating app. And one might think, oh, well, that's a really good thing. I don't have to leave my house. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, uh, going out and getting dressed and doing all that extra stuff. I can just cut it all out and only do the date. But in reality, it only serves to give you lower quality men in higher quantity because Remember what I said and what I've always been saying about guys and human beings in general, they're always trying to take the path of least resistance. So if the men want Squirtle out of you, you, you should know what Squirtle is by now. They're going to try to get that with the least resistance.
where I have to meet people and do things and talk to them and be charismatic where I could possibly get rejected by those women when I can just sit at home, be on the dating app and not have to worry about the rejection. And number four, no chemistry because men are able to be more lazy by using dating apps like we mentioned before majority of the men on there are less motivated on working on skills that would make them interesting or charismatic simply because the world no longer requires that from them instead they come up with gimmicky tactics to attract most women on these dating apps. Then when you meet them, you have no chemistry with them because the attraction was centered around the gimmick. I forgot to tell you the best, this is probably gonna make you cry. Absolute best, most juiciest part of this. Remember how I always tell you guys to be weary of texting and how texting will give you this false understanding of who a human being is and what they're like and how they think, how they act, right? And the longer you go being a textaholic and not actually meeting the person in person, more you'll build this idea of the human being and who they are. And it's not actually representative of who they really are. So as it relates to dating apps, this is the best part. I was just talking to you about those videos and how they tell the men how to organize their profile to make themselves the most attractive and attract the most women. They also instruct the men on how to message those women when they do match with those women. I hate to say it out loud and it sounds horrible, but it's the truth. And I'm not just talking about, oh, uh, in general, ask about this or ask her about that or say like this. I'm talking about they tell these men word for word what to send in each message, what your first message should be, what your next message should be, what your third message should be. And take a wild guess at what the goal of this strategy is. It's to get you in person on a date, date as fast as possible to extract, let's take a wild guess, squirtle from you. These men are teaching the men and I like, listen, I'm a man, so I've been there. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm better than any man or uh, I'm an evolved man and I would never do something like, I've done stuff like that and I've watched videos like that, which is why I know it is tricking you into believing in a personality that does not exist. And it's not just a Tinder thing, not just a Bumble thing. It's not just a Hinge thing. It's all of the dating apps because these strategies can be applied to all of them. So I'll give you guys a direct example. Let's say you see a guy post really cool pictures of him and his dog and a funny prompt along with it. Let's say you're on Hinge. I know how all the dating apps work. You match with him thinking he's funny and interesting and adventurous. But when you meet him, you discover He's so boring, so uninteresting, and so immature. Nothing like you imagined him to be. Not realizing that he created his profile using a template that other guys recommended to him to work very well. Lies why you don't have chemistry with the guys that you're meeting on these dating apps. Because a lot of them are manufacturing their personality to not even be representative of who they are but simply to cast the widest net, like I said, and catch the most fish so that they can have access to the most women. And number five, who's next? Because of the massive amount of options on the dating app, it creates a subconscious thought that she is just one of many, which makes many men unwilling to do anything for that girl to get her. This is why most men on dating apps won't chase too much or try too hard for you, right? Because when I have a thousand women to choose from and one of them doesn't like me or one of them makes it a little bit harder than I wanted them to or anticipated them doing, I just move on to the next girl. Because remember, I'm here for the path of least resistance as a man. I'm not here to do the most for any singular girl, because why would I? I have 500 more to choose from on the same app. And this is why you play a dangerous game by meeting the guys on the dating apps, because the guys on the dating apps have an understanding that they have a plethora of other options. And so when their mind is on the plethora of other options they have, how can they ever be focused on you and the relationship that they're trying to build with you? How can they ever go through the peaks and valleys of a natural 
natural, regular, healthy relationship when all they can think about as soon as things don't go exactly how they want them to go is, oh my God, I can just go swiping for a new girl. Remember how I said there's a, a lot of different techniques that you can use to inspire a man to chase you? But the problem is you're, you're going to be setting yourself up for failure if you're meeting men who aren't even motivated to chase anything at all in the first place. Because remember what I talked to you guys about earlier, that it's a modern day bar, but a lot easier for these men because now they don't have to actually put themselves out there. Now they don't have to actually be charismatic. Now they don't have to spit game. They, have, they don't have to flirt. They don't have to be interesting or funny or any of that. They can use their templates that they find on YouTube and TikTok. They can send the messages that other guys tell them to send and just copy and paste. They can talk to you exactly in the way that other guys and other people tell them to talk to you that would make them seem the most interesting and get them where they want to go. And they don't even have to face rejection from the women that don't like them. And so it creates this environment where all a lot of the men that are on the dating app are very, very lazy very lazy and i'm not just talking about lazy in their relationships lazy in their life because remember the same way you go about your life same way you go about your relationship and so because they have a desire to be constantly comfortable and they have no motivation to do anything more than the bare minimum they get on the dating app because the dating app represents the bare minimum and like i said it's not to date this everyone who's ever used the dating app because i've been there I just want you to understand the culture. If I'm seeking to do the least amount of work to get what I want, and I want to do the bare minimum, I'm going to do the bare minimum, which means I'm going to do things congruent to the bare minimum. So if a lot of these men are on dating apps and you find that a lot of these men on dating apps are shy or not charismatic or not interesting or boring or weird, that should tell you it's because the dating app is the path of least resistance. And so a lot of you are wondering, why is it only bad men out here? Why is it only cheaters out here? Why is it only the, 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 the horrible uh, waste men out here in these streets? Well, that's because you're spending all of your time in the places where all the unmotivated men who don't want to do, put in any effort to chase after anything are spending all of their time because you're literally putting yourself in the path of least resistance and then you're wondering why all the men you come across always want the path of least resistance you're literally standing in that path and so if you take yourself off of the path of least resistance or at least take yourself out of that environment where all the men would be who want the path of least resistance would be spending their time well now you're going to come across totally different men you're going to come across men that will be properly motivated to chase after you you see how that works? The same way you wouldn't go to a bar and expect that the all the men that you meet at a bar are uninterested in a one night stand is the same way don't go on the dating app and wonder why all the guys on the dating app are looking for the path of least resistance. You're on an app that only requires him to swipe left or right on you to make a decision on whether or not he wants to see you or spend time with you or get to know you. He only has to take his finger and swipe left or swipe right. So let me give you guys an example. If I meet a girl on a dating app and I talk to her for three days and then organize a first date at, let's say, a typical dinner date at a restaurant, I will go on the date with the intention to play nice for the date just so I can smash after. I'm telling you the truth. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Okay. If the date goes by and she says she's not willing to come over or, you know, she wants to hold out or that's not her thing. She's not that type of girl. I will then ghost her because it's a waste of my time. And remember, I'm not here to take a path that requires any resistance at all. I came on the dating app to make my life easier, not to make my life harder. So if you're not willing to make my life easier, you're done. You're wasting my time right? So I ghost you. I know I can find another girl quickly with a simple swipe right or swipe left that will not make me work as hard to smash on the first date. This is the dangerous part because if you're a chronic date apper, app dater, and that's how you're meeting all of your men, 
you encounter the same type of men who only want the path of least resistance. So what happens? Remember how I talked to you guys about yesterday? Your environment is also going to play a role in your bias. And when I say bias, I mean what you feel is the truth about the world. So when you're constantly on dating apps and meeting all your men through dating apps, you're going to feel like all men are eager to smash on the first night. But what's going to happen after a while is after a while of you saying to yourself, oh, I'm going to hold out or I'm going to be not like the other girls or I'm going to make sure I build the relationship first and not be and not allow him to smash on the first night. You're going to constantly meet the same guys on the dating apps who have the same intention, which is the path of least resistance. And then you're going to begin to be become frustrated because every time you try to hold out or every time you try to stand your ground, all the men leave. And then you're going to be confused and think you're doing something wrong because all the men are responsible to you in the same way. And so what happens? You begin to become fearful of the fact that if you don't act the way they want you to act, they're all going to respond the same way and then you'll have nobody. And so as time goes on, you become more and more fearful. And so when you do meet those guys on the first night, the moment you feel like you're vibing with them, the moment you feel like you're getting along, you're in this subconscious fear state where I hope you don't leave me or I hope you don't not like me because I don't give it to you on the first date. And so what do you do? You give it to him on the first date, hoping that he'll like you and accept you and won't walk away like all the other guys you've been meeting on the dating apps, right? You see how that happens. And quickly you find yourself in a snowball effect where now, instead of you standing your ground, because you surrounded yourself with all these like-minded men who approach the relationship the same way, you've now created a bias where, oh my God, if I don't sleep with him on the first night, then he's going to ghost me. Then he's going to ignore me, which means I got to sleep with him on the first night or else. And you create this really dangerous scenario for yourself where you're like, oh, my God, if I like a guy and I go on a date with him and it goes well, I got to sleep with him ASAP or else I'm going to lose him. And this is what happens when you constantly put yourself in that environment and in that path of least resistance for the men.